Although the meanwhile, I'm sitting here in a sweater, so I'm starting to get a little sweaty over here. So Danny, please turn the heat down. <laughs> Um, a friendly reminder, um, the Tudor Bag Sew Along is wrapping up this week. Um, if you're in the middle of your Tudor Bag, there's still plenty of time to finish it to be included in the Sew Along. Um, we have some great prizes for you at the end. And Michelle and Bronwyn wanted me to announce the winner of week three for the Sew Along, and that's Christine Wa. I hope I pronounced that correctly. It's W-A-U-G-H. So congratulations to you, Christine, and lots of amazing Tudor Bags coming through. Uh, one more magnificent than the next. Um, we liked this comment from Thoughtfully Sewn before the show started. Um, she said, I did a Sew Sweetness Marathon today, had all her videos playing in the background while I sewed. Awesome idea, like that. Um, we saw another comment from Brian. I don't know if Danny's gonna put it up for me. Um, no, he says no. Um, welcome to Lori from Oregon. Hello to Mindy. Um, Brian's comment was that he's going uh, packing up for Disney World next week, and I'm super jealous. I saw that comment come through, and I was like, oh my gosh, I wish I, I was going to Disney next week. That sounds like a lot of fun. Um, anyway, just a friendly reminder before I get started, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself, so these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description, so if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, patterns, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more there. So this week I decided, since it came up recently, to discuss Decoville Heavy versus Paltex, and I know on camera or in pictures, interfacing is really hard to come across what exactly it's like. Um, but I wanted to talk about it anyway. I have a couple samples and I've attached a couple samples to fabric. So I'll do my best to get the point across. Um, but if you are interested or, or think you might like to try the Decoville Heavy out, if you've used Paltex in the past, I suggest purchasing a, a small bit and see if you like it. I super loved it. Um, but Obviously with interfacing, everyone has their own personal preference. So I'm gonna step over to the side camera, show you my fabric uh, samples and the interfacing samples and explain a little bit more over there. Okay, so before we get started, here are my samples of, this is the Peltex right here, the one that looks more white. And this is the Decoville Heavy and uh, it's, I don't know if the sheen comes across on camera, but this is the fusible side, the side that, side that looks shiny. And for the Pell on Peltex, um, the one-sided fusible, the side that feels bumpy to your fingertips is the side with the adhesive. So I'm not sure if Danny can zoom in close enough, um, but I wanted to show you a side-by-side -side comparison of the thickness. Okay, so the one on top, the one that's white, that's the Pollen Paltex, and the one on the bottom, that's the Decoville Heavy, so you can probably see the comparison with the thickness uh, right off the bat. And as you can also notice in the Paltex, because Danny got pretty close, you can kind of see the fibers, and um, the difference is the Paltex Heavy, uh, Danny, I think that's a little too close. Uh, the Paltex Heavy doesn't have the same fibers at least that is seen in the, the Paltex. Okay, so if you wouldn't mind zooming back out again, Danny. Sorry, I'm making you work tonight. Um, I fused samples of the interfacing to two pieces of fabric, and the yellow fabric is the Paltex, and the teal fabric is the Decoville Heavy. So I've seen a lot of descriptions of the Decoville Heavy where they reference it um, as far as the interfacing giving the fabric a leather-like feel. Um, I guess I can sort of see that it's it's stiff but it's also a little bit flexible so I'm not sure if I can get this across well on camera but if I kind of hold the Peltex um, horizontally it stays horizontal and it doesn't bend over as you can see it's still pretty straight the Decoville Heavy though when I kind of hold it horizontally it doesn't stay stiff which I think is a, a nice feature it's a little bit more flexible than the Peltex Peltex super stiff the Decoville Heavy um, is still stiff while being flexible, which I suppose maybe that's why they call it giving the fabric a leather-like finish. So I did my balling up test where I attached the fabric, the fusible, to the wrong side of the fabric. I balled up these squares and then I tried to iron them flat. The pelt, the, sorry, the Decoville Heavy, after I did that, I crumpled it up and then I ironed it flat. It ironed back pretty smooth. The Peltex, which we've talked about in the past, I, I see a few wrinkles on it. I realized after the fact that I should have chosen a pure solid instead of a 
Moda Grunge fabric because anywhere where I could have shown you that had the wrinkles, I think the, the texture of the fabric is kind of taking away from that. Maybe if I hold it to the side, you can kind of see there's wrinkles over here. Um, it ironed out okay, but like I said, there's a few wrinkles on the Peltex. So I think that's one of the main advantages to using the Decoville Heavy. Um, all of the, um, because you're generally finishing a bag by pulling it right side out through the opening in the lining. And when you're doing that, you're kind of crinkling the fabric up. So that's why I did that balling up test where I balled up the fabric and then tried to iron it flat. I really liked the outcome of the Decoville Heavy. I also made it in a wallet, not the wallet that I'm showing you tonight, but a different wallet that I'll be showing probably next Sunday. And I like that the Decoville Heavy is thinner because in that finished wallet, I can still have a stiff wallet, but without it being so thick and a little bit on the bulky side. So both products good. Um, I've used Peltex tons in the past. I prefer the Peltex uh, sew-in rather than the fusible, but I've used it in the airplane bag, uh, the Sublime bag, lots of other projects. And it served me well in the past as far as being a sew-in interfacing. I only started using the Decoville Heavy this year, but I'm really liking um, the stiffness of it and that it's thinner and a little bit more flexible. Okay, so those are those two interfacings. Um, I linked to a shop that carries the Decoville Heavy, and they also carry a Woven Fuse, which is a wider alternative to the Pellon Shape Flex. So if you think you might want to give the Decoville Heavy a try, I suggest getting a small amount, um, because generally I don't make a, a, an entire bag using a stiff interfacing like Peltex or Decoville Heavy. Usually I just use a small piece for maybe the bottom of the bag, or if it's a wallet for obviously while it's a small project. Um, I invite you to give it a shot. Um, the website is gotinterfacing.com, got interfacing link to it in the description. And um, again, I purchased mine, so I'm not getting paid to give you um, uh, a review that's glowing about it. I really did like it a lot. And um, if you've tried it out before, let me know in the comments. I'd like to see those of you that have tried the Decoville Heavy and what you thought about it. Okay, so um, now on to the Minikins 2 preview. As promised, um, tonight's preview is for a wallet. You might have seen a little sneak peek on social media earlier this evening. I actually have three wallets in the new Minikins 2 bundle, which I'm super excited about. This wallet that I'm showing tonight is the simplest of the three, but I think it has some cool features, and um, certainly I'm, I'm excited about this one. Um, this one is called um, the Charm, Charm School Wallet. So here's one of the sides, as if you'll notice, it's got a zipper on the top edge. Here's the back of the wallet. It's got an accent on it, and let me open it up. It opens with either cam snaps or pearl snaps, so it's got the four snaps, um, two halves of the snaps on the top and the bottom of the wallet. It actually fits a checkbook on one side if you'd like, cash on the other, and then I don't, I don't nearly have enough uh, loyalty cards and credit cards to fill my whole wallet, so I just threw a couple in there, but it'll fit a, fit a whole bunch cards on top and bottom. And the really cool thing that I found after I sewed this wallet together is that the zippered compartment actually fits my cell phone. I have a rather large cell phone with a case and my cell phone fits inside, which I think is a cool feature too if you want to just kind of grab and go. I could also see this as uh, having a little wrist, wrist strap to be a wristlet and having all of your things on the inside. So. Um, hope you like this wallet. I'll show you the, the two remaining wallets in the Minikins bundle on a future live show, and I'll show another wallet next Sunday. So, um, yeah, there's your Minikin Season 2 preview for tonight. So, Danny's favorite part of the show, I'd like to invite you now to go ahead and type either Bag Lady or Bag Dude in the comment. So, go ahead and type that for me right now. Um, we really love the bag making community that has formed around these two terms, Bag Lady and Bag Dude. There's been lots of uh, local meetups going on. I think we had five or six meetups happening just yesterday. So we did some live calls yesterday. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun seeing people connect in person. And I had some emails after the meetups happened and I was told that people were chatting about bag making tips and uh, fabric choices and all this stuff during their meetups. So that's a lot of fun to hear. And I'm so glad that those meetups are happening. All right, so the, the fabric in my stash this week is not a brand new fabric. I haven't actually purchased any new fabric in a few weeks, but I decided to show you some Alexander Henry fabric from my stash. Initially, I was just gonna show you two fabrics. 
Um, these are actually in violet stash, so there was a Pegasus fabric and a coordinating print, but I thought, well, I have a lot of other um, prints from the same manufacturer. The manufacturer is Alexander Henry, so I pulled some of my Alexander Henry fabrics out. Um, in general, they're novelty and one-off prints, so not a complete fabric line, but just really cool fabric prints, and I'm going to step over to the side camera and show you those fabrics right now. All right, so this was the, the Pegasus fabric that I was initially going to show you. And it's a cool print for, I think, a child, but as you know, I love horses, so anything with horses or unicorns I super love. So I think I was going to make some sort of travel bag for Violet with this fabric. Really cool colors. I just I could also see this as really neat pillowcases, and I bought this as a coordinate. So this was also from Alexander Henry, and it was just sort of a geometric prints on trees to go along with the trees that were in the, the Pegasus fabric. Let me show you a few more Alexander, Prince, Alexander Henry prints that I found. The easiest way, in my opinion, to find these Alexander Henry fabrics is to do a search on Etsy just for Alexander Henry fabric. This is an old favorite. Um, I've had this in my stash for years. I made a dress with it probably eight or nine years ago. This particular print is called In Crowd. I just love the faces, and I don't know, for some reason, this one um, kind of reminds me of Paul McCartney's face. I don't know if that's completely accurate or not, but I thought it was really cool. Here's another novelty print from Alexander Henry that I like with little fruits on it. I have another print with these same fruits but larger, which is really cool as well. I love the colors on that one. Here's another horse, as I'm a collector of horse prints. Um, if you read any horse books when you were a kid. This reminds me of the Marguerite Henry books, uh, the illustrations in them, just horses with their names underneath. And here's one more. I think I showed this on a past show, but since this is Alexander Henry, I thought I'd pull it out again anyway. Just some unicorns. This is a recent print from this year, and it came in uh, three colorways in total. I got the black, and they also have it in like a pale pink and a light blue. Okay, here's another, if you're into tattoos, um, here's another fabric with some chicks with tattoos. <laughs> and then since Halloween is coming up, I have these three zombie prints, if you're into Walking Dead or, or zombies. Sort of like pin-up zombie girls on this, on this fabric, and it came in three different colorways, so I bought all three colorways. This is pretty cool. This one's a cowgirl. <laughs> and then here's the, the third colorway, which is my favorite, I think, because green makes me think of a zombie. All right, so these are all, again, prints by Alexander Henry, who's the manufacturer, and I would use that term if you're interested in finding some of these online or searching on Etsy or fabric.com. All right, so... Yesterday, I got a letter in the mail that there, the city of Chicago was calling me for jury duty, and I was all okay with that, and then I noticed the date that they're calling me for ju jury duty is two days before the Minikins comes out, uh, Minikin season two, so I was in, in a little bit of a panic because we need all of our time this month for filming the videos, and uh, oh, I guess I'll be taking my laptop laptop downtown that day and um, saving myself some work that I can do on the laptop to get ready for the minikins. But I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. Um, have you ever served on jury duty? So I was called for jury duty in the past. Um, I didn't even get up to the point of having to go up and being questioned to be chosen for jury duty. They filled, filled their slot before um, I had my chance, which I suppose was good. But um, I don't know. My dad, my dad was talking to me about it today, and he said that being on the jury was pretty interesting and having to decide if uh, somebody should be awarded. Um, it was sort of a financial um, injury case, having to decide if somebody should be awarded that money or not. Um, so I guess it would be really interesting. I just don't know if I'd want to spend uh, days or weeks or however long on the jury. So interested to see what people say in the comments. I see some yes. I see a bunch of yeses already. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments if you've ever served on jury duty. Um, the book review for this week will be sort of a booklet, so not a full out book, but it's a booklet that I got a couple weeks ago, weeks ago called Daydreams 2, and I'm always looking for a quilt pattern 
that will serve me well for large scale prints because I love using large scale prints in bags and I also like to use them in my quilts as well. So I'm gonna step over to that side camera again and show you Daydreams 2, the quilt pattern booklet. All right, so here's the cover of the quilt pattern booklet. And as you can see from the cover, these are some of the options that are given for um, these quilts made with large scale prints. So there's some that are just uh, strips and rectangles, and there's also quilt designs which have the stars on them, which I think are really cool. And this quilt pattern book is designed by Lavender Lime. And here's some of the options in the front of the book color options as well as the look of the finished quilt and we've got some of the options for the quilts with just the strips and the rectangles and the back cover so again really easy piecing um, it's full color fully illustrated and i love the detailed cutting instructions especially because i know um, that's a real time saver as far as ha me having to figure what's going on with the quilt pattern and the piecing is really straightforward. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of their instructions, but again, this is Daydreams 2, and if you're looking for a fast quilt, I know this one looks super fast to make. If you're lo looking for a fast quilt that can be made with your large scale prints, um, I think this would be a great option. And they also have Daydreams 1, which is another quilt pattern booklet with more quilts using large scale prints. And the link is in the description if you're interested in checking out either Daydreams 2 or seeing what other quilt patterns they had on offer. I saw some really cute Christmas ones on their website as well. All right, so if you enjoy our live shows, if you're watching right now, uh, we'd like to invite you to hit the share button if you're watching on Facebook. Regardless, either if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, if you could at least hit the like button, which is a little picture of a thumbs up. The likes and shares helps us out so so much because Facebook and YouTube look very kindly on videos with a lot of likes and shares and even just hitting that like button really helps us out so thank you so much for doing that all right so I had a request maybe a month or two ago to talk about different needle sizes and while there are a huge amount of different needle types and different sizes of needles out there tonight I'm just focusing on the needles used for bag making because that's kind of what we're about over here um, so again, I'm going to step over to the side camera, show you a couple of different needle packets that I have in my stash. And also I made a little graphic for needle sizes and types of needles for bag making. So um, I'll show you the needles first and then Danny's going to throw up that graphic for you on the screen. All right, so let's get this stuff out of the way. So here's three packets of Schmetz brand needles. Oh, sorry about that. The glare. All right, so here's three packets of needles that I have in my stash. Danny's gonna try to zoom in so we could see the numbers clearly on the packets of needles. Okay, so if you'll notice, um, there's something in common that all three packets have. So all three packets have, um, it says 130, 705 on these two, and this one just says 130. So the 130, 705 just means that these needles are meant for sewing on a home sewing machine. So that's what that first set of numbers means. Um, in reference to needle size, so I'm gonna look at these uh, top stitch needles. Um, it says 9014. So the higher number in the series of numbers, so either 9014 or 116, the highest number of the two is the European metric unit and the lower number, so the 14, is the American unit. And these numbers stand for the needle shaft diameter. So basically the, the amount of measurement to t it takes to go around the needle, that's the diameter. So the 90 means, uh, because it's metric, it means uh, 0.9 millimeters or 0 0.90 millimeters. Uh, the finer the fabric that you're sewing with, the lower the needle size, so that means the 1016 needle would be meant for fabric that's thicker than the 9014. So that makes sense since these are G needles. Okay, so Danny's gonna throw a graphic up on the screen right now and we're gonna talk through some of these needles. And if you look at the graphic, there's really not a huge amount of needles that I would use in bag making. And again, this is just based on the fabrics that I generally use. I'm generally using quilting cottons or things like um, a thin leather or vinyl. So. The first two lines on the list um, say Universal or Microtex. The first listing is 8012, 
and that particular needle size is used for shirtings, rayon, or light wool. Uh, I used a light wool when I recently made my Tudor bag. The second line says Universal or Microtex 9014. That's the needle I use pretty much all of the time, and that's for medium weight fabric, if you think of quilting cotton, and for top stitching. So the difference between the Universal needle and the Microtex needle is the Universal needle is um, has a slightly rounded point because it's suitable for sewing with both wovens and knits. And the Microtex is slim and has an acute angle. And Danny explained to me earlier, the acute angle means it's a tight angle, very tight angle. Um, below my logo in the middle, there's two other needles that I might possibly use for bag making. And that's the jeans denim needle. Um, the sizes I would use would be either 9014 or 116. And that's for use with obviously denim, um, but also can be used for heavy outdoor fabric and tightly woven fabric. Um, the other day I was making a cooler because I was working on the Minikins cooler for Minikins season two and I was using a duck cloth or a, an outdoor fabric and I had to go out and get um, the denim needle for using that and I noticed because I had a little strip of quilting cotton in that same project when I was using that denim jeans needle on the quilting cotton it I could hear it puncturing the fabric and my stitches were a little bit crooked so it really is super important that you pay attention to what needle you're using and based on what fabric you're using for the project. It really does matter, it makes a difference. So that denim needle has a strong shaft for dealing with that uh, jeans or denim or outdoor heavy fabric. Um, the fourth needle that I have in the listing is the Leather 9014 needle, which is can be used for all leather and vinyl. And the important thing to know about a leather needle is a leather needle is a cutting point needle, so it's it designed to slice, so not just go in between the um, the weave of the fabric, it's meant to actually slice through it. So that's why it's made for leather and vinyl. Several common brands of sewing machine needles are Schmetz, Organ, or Singer. Uh, all right, Danny, thank you for that graphic. I hope that made sense and kind of uh, explained uh, a little bit more about needles and different needle sizes. I know it can look overwhelming, so that's why I broke it down by just Needles that I would use for bag making, obviously those are just needles I would commonly use because based on the fabrics that I use. Obviously if you're using different fabrics for your bags than the ones that I just explained, you'll wanna purchase the appropriate needle based on your fabric. That's super important as I already mentioned. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments what brand of needles do you usually buy? Um, as I mentioned, the common brands are Schmetz, Organ, or Singer. Maybe you have a different brand that you use. Um, I initially started sewing with the organ needles, which I really love. Um, I also love the Schmetz Microtex needles. Um, those have served me well, especially for dealing with uh, cork or vinyl. So let me know in the comments what type of needle that you usually buy. So um, let's get on over to the winner of last week's giveaway. That's a bundle of the Minikins Season 2 that's coming out on October 31st. Um, that winner was Charmaine Brown, so congratulations to Charmaine. Um, I contacted you on social media, just let me know. I just need your email address so that I can contact you again on October 31st with uh, a coupon code for your free bundle. So if you have any questions for, for me, let me know now in the comments. I'll be answering some questions live. So either um, a sewing related question, bag making related question, if you have a question about a sewing tool or notion, go ahead and ask that question in the comments and I'll answer as many questions as I can before Danny cuts me off. All right. Uh, I see all the needle types going through. I see tons of Schmetz, uh, people are using Schmetz needles a lot. So um, yeah, that's a, very, that's a very common brand. I see Danielle also started out, off with the um, organ needles as well. All right, um, and I realized that I forgot to draw a winner for our sewing angel from last week. Um, if you watched my show last Sunday, I asked people just to comment, bag lady or bag dude. Um, I'll announce that winner Next week I'll have to write myself a note because I, it, because it was sort of an unusual giveaway that we entered in there. Um, I completely forgot to draw an extra winner for this week, so I'll do that again. I'll answer. I'll uh, announce that winner next Sunday. All right. Oh, sorry, Danny. <laughs> I flooded Danny with my uh, sewing needle comments. So, um, all right. Uh, or if anyone has a question about uh, the interfacing, which we talked about at the beginning of the show. Feel free to ask about that as well. Elisa says, did you announce the winner of the September Minikins Challenge? I did, I announced it on uh, the blog post. I believe her 
handle was Lily. I, I do not remember. I did post it in the Facebook group as well as announcing it on that September Minikins Challenge blog post. Sarah says, was there a notion tonight? My YouTube was slow to start tonight. Um, Sarah, I actually talked about interfacing in place of the notion. I was planning on talking about my new sewing machine light, but we actually found a source for sewing the same sewing machine light that I just bought, but at a really great price, like much cheaper than what I bought it for. So uh, I'll wait to talk about that sewing machine light until we get ours in stock. It was really funny because I was talking about that sewing machine light with Danny and I told him that I had found a source for it. And uh, I thought- I found it. <laughs> All right. Correction, Danny found the source. Uh, I did the contacting, so in my mind, that meant I found the source. Anyway, um, I didn't think he would go for the selling the sewing machine light on the website because he's usually lately trying to cut me off from bringing new products in because we don't have enough room, even though I would constantly want to bring cool new products in. But he gave me the green light on the sewing machine light, so we're just waiting for our stock to come in. I'll do the review of that light, and we'll list that on the website as soon as we have them. But they're really cool and uh, looking forward to showing you that light. Kathy says, do you need a tool to put the snaps on the wallet? That's a great question. So there are several different brands that make uh, pearl snaps and tools. Uh, I think I have my tool over here. Let me slide over and grab it. Mm, no, denied. All right, so, uh, we sell on our website the snap setter tool, which is pearl snaps, and we sell those in metal, actual metal snaps, and you actually just use a hammer to install the pearl snaps with a tool. Um, the snaps that I use for th this particular wallet, um, these are cam snaps, which are plastic snaps. People commonly use these for uh, cloth diapers. I use cloth diapers for my kids, so that's why I know that. Um, but I decided to use these plastic snaps because I wanted them in a certain color. Um, the cam plastic snaps have either a handheld tool to install them or a tabletop press, which I have as well. So um, several options for installing different types of snaps. Um, the pearl snaps are usually metal and installed uh, often with a hammer. And those cam snaps either with a handheld press or a tabletop press. April says, did you say that the Decoville Heavy was fusible only? When I've tried the fusible flex foam, the project has ended up very wrinkly. So that's a really good question. Um, I remember an email about that from someone else uh, maybe about a week or so ago and they were asking about the foam in the Decoville Heavy. I know this was not your question but it kind of brought to mind that other email. I wouldn't necessarily use the Decoville Heavy in place of the Flex, flex Foam because they're kind of two different things. Um, however, to answer your question, um, as far as I'm aware, the Decoville Heavy I believe is just fusible. Um, the fusible reminds me if you've ever used Pelon uh, Decker bond, how uh, it's shiny when you hold it up to the light. That's what it reminds me of. The Pelon Peltax kind of has, especially where the fusible is, you can kind of see its little raised areas. And so that's another main difference between the Decoville Heavy and the Peltax, the way the adhesive is applied to it. Um, Suzette says, Sarah, what number do you usually set your tension on your Juki? Uh, so I... I'm not a sewing machine expert, but I usually have my tension dial on my Juki on the front of the machine set between one and two, but really, really close to two. When I took it in for servicing uh, maybe three or four months ago, they told me that my tension should always be at six, but when I came home and I tried to take their advice and show it, uh, sew with my quilting cotton at the tension for uh, setting six, it, it tended to gather my fabric. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've always sewn between one and two, but really close to two, and that's what I've had the best luck uh, sewing with. Kathy says, I was told by one quilt shop owner that the Microtech sharp needles were meant only for batiks. That sounded odd to me. Thoughts? Um, I, I don't know. I've been using Microtech's needles for a while. I know batiks need a different needle, and Microtech's could very well be the needle for the batiks due to the weave of the batiks. But uh, I've been using those Microtex Sharps for a really long time and I've had nothing odd happen when I've been sewing or making a bag with it. Beverly says, I saw your video on the Snap Setter Hammer tool and pictures you posted. Did you know there's e an even smaller secret screwdriver? I actually didn't know that when I first uh, made that video showing the Snap Setter tool and actually people emailed me letting me know. So here's the hammer that Beverly's talking about. I found out after the fact that there's another screwdriver. So here's the first one. Let me find the second one. 
second one right here, and this is a flathead screwdriver. Third one, and there's a fourth one in the third screwdriver, so it's a super, super teeny tiny. So there's, <laughs> there's actually four screwdrivers, yeah, and it is the super secret one. I guess I was not cool enough to find that one uh, the first time around. <laughs> Deanna says, when making an I Spy pouch, can you add fabric to the ends of the zipper like you did two Sundays ago on the needle pouches to avoid the bulk of the zipper ends? You sure could. Um, if you wanted to do that, um, as I did in the needle pouch demonstration last Sunday, um, just cut your zipper. I recommend cutting the zipper three quarters of an, um, yeah, three quarters of an inch shorter than your fabric panel that you'll be sewing it into. So let me grab one of my I Spy pouches from up here. So if you want to keep the zipper out of the ends of the fabric, cut the zipper three quarters of an inch uh, less, not as long as the this panel right here. Um, I like to cut my zipper tabs uh, three inches by one and a half inches and then press them kind of like double fold bias tape. And then by cutting that zipper shorter, when you go to sew the sides, you're actually not sewing over the zipper or the zipper tabs. You're leaving those out of the seam allowance, but your zipper ends will look nice um, when your project is finished because you won't have extra fabric in the seam allowance. So that's another option certainly for the I Spy pouch. Gwen says, what is the safest method to use to enlarge one of your bag patterns? I see lots of comments on Facebook, but not sure which is the best in your opinion. So <clears throat> I feel like the most foolproof method would be to enlarge them by a certain percentage, either on your home printer scanner or by taking it to an office uh, printing store like Staples or Office Max. My patterns, I don't have pattern pieces for squares or rectangles, so my suggestion for the easiest way would be uh, to draw out the squares and rectangles and enlarge those while you're enlarging the other pattern pieces. Um, you can get away with not enlarging every single pattern piece, but then you'll need to do a little figuring as far as, <clears throat> excuse me, the length of the pieces you might need, say, for a bottom panel. Um, my other suggestion would be for enlarging um, bag patterns not to enlarge the straps or if there's tabs on the bag because you'll likely want to keep those uh, the same measurements as in the pattern so you can use the same size hardware and likely you won't need to have like a humongous strap if you're enlarging the bag likely the the original strap width will suit you just fine Deanna says would it be possible to add a what's new in the shop on your website oh that's a really good idea let me write that down for um, my web developer is also called Sarah but with an H and I call her web Sarah so let me email web Sarah and see if we can uh, get something like that going on the website that's a really great idea thanks for the suggestion Laura says the bag behind you the red and white one which pattern is it please it's gorgeous thank you very much Laura <coughs> this is the renegade bag um, I used white cork fabric for the straps and accents and the main red fabric is actually hand printed fabric from Australia that I bought um, several years ago. It's from Ink and Spindle in Australia. I believe this particular print is out of out of print, but they do have other really beautiful prints on their website. And like I said, they're hand printed, which I think is really cool. All right, Charlie. Charlie says, would the Decoville Heavy be a good replacement for Peltex in the Amethyst Project bag? There are two layers of Peltex and I like the stiffness. So that depends. I also like the stiffness in the Amethyst Project bag because it, um, the Peltex is used in the lid and also in the back panel of the bag. Um, I, don't, I haven't made it yet, the, that particular project with the Decoville Heavy instead. I think um, just on thinking through it, I think I would probably still use the two layers of Peltex because I like not only the stiffness but the thickness in that particular project at least. Um, so hopefully that helps. <coughs> Carrie says, when you oil your machine, what areas need to be oiled? So um, obviously, depending on your machine, you'll want to check your sewing machine manual. Danny, do you mind if I throw my machine up on the table? What do I mind? Uh, well, because you're going to have to adjust the lights a little bit. Here, let's see. <laughs> Automatic. Alrighty. Anything white we throw up on the screen tends to make everything look really dark, so that's why I asked Danny's permission first. So on my machine... Hopefully you can see it here. This is the Juki 2010, um, TL 2010, and also the it'll apply to the 2200 QVP Mini. So here's one hole right here for oil. There's another one over here. And there's some up on the top. So as you can see, the hole's up on the top. And then I also like to oil, let's see if I can show you properly, where the bobbin casing goes. 
I like to also put a teeny drop of oil like right on the bottom edge over there, kind of where the, the metal parts turn around in a circle. So that's where I oil on my particular sewing machine. Obviously, check your manual because every machine is different. And I also got this cool oiler recently. I don't know if you've... Oh, heavy sewing machine. I don't know if you saw um, this on a live show recently, but we got these um, metal oilers in recently, and I really love it because it's really easy to oil every time you hit the button on the top, kind of like a pen, kind of like a ballpoint pen. Every time you hit the button, it dispenses one drop of oil, and it's really handy to get to places that aren't necessarily up and down. Um, I used to have this little oil canister, and it also always used to drip more than one drop, or um, I never would have been able to use my previous oil canister to get uh, sideways in that bobbin casing. So this, love this little tool. Mary says, have you tried the So Lazy interfacings? I actually have some behind me. So here's a packet. Um, it's called Stiff Stuff. Someone on the show recommended that I give this a try. And I ordered some uh, online. And it's really, really similar to the Peltex sew-in interfacing. So this particular interfacing is not fusible. I feel, um, yeah, very similar to the Peltex. It comes by the yard too, but I just bought this little craft pack because I wanted just to see what it was like in person. So if you like uh, Peltex sew-in, I feel like this is um, a really high quality um, substitute or um, cousin to that particular interfacing at least. So if you can find this at your local quilt shop, this is a really great interfacing as well. Amanda says, I am love, love, loving the Tudor bag sew along. Are any other sew alongs in the works? That's so funny that you asked because Michelle and Bronwyn sent me a message about half hour before we went live and they said they wanted to do another sew along uh, in November. And I said, uh, number one, I was like, I, I thought you would be exhausted. And uh, I don't know what my number two was, but um, they were trying to decide what the next pattern should be. So if you have a request for the next sew along, Go ahead and type that in the comments. So Michelle and Bronwyn, I saw Michelle uh, and I'm not sure if Bronwyn's on the show, but leave your comments uh, for Michelle so sh she can see which pattern you would like as your choice for the next sew along. I don't know. We were throwing around a few options, but um, obviously everyone has their own personal preference. Linda says, what is the best place to get cam snaps? Are there a lot of different sizes and what size for the wallet? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think my cam snaps are size 20 according to the cam snap uh, measurement chart. Uh, I may be wrong. I purchased my cam snaps on Etsy as well as the tabletop press, but like I said, there's a handheld press for the cam snaps as well. And it's uh, just in case this affects your search results, it's cam with a K, so K A M, and that's uh, snap. Um, yeah, Etsy's a great place, and there's dozens and dozens of colors. I have probably 20 different colors of cam snaps. So really fun, especially for projects uh, for kids or even not for kids because I like the cam snaps as well. Uh, Mary Grace says, I purchased your precision machine oiler, made oiling mess free, two thumbs up. All right, glad it worked out for you. I'm super happy with mine. Um, trying not to find too many cool new things because uh, Danny's gonna make me sleep in the basement with all my sewing tools. <laughs> Pat says, what is the size or type of table press you use for most bags? Um, I don't know if, I don't, let's see if my press is in here. I think the press is in the kitchen right now, but I use a, a rivet press from Minkus Margo. Um, if you search on Etsy under M Minkus Margo, she actually has a product listing for So Sweetness for the rivet sizes and the grommet sizes that I use. Just in case you want to see all those listed, um, I like using eight millimeter rivets and in her shop, those are the rivets with the regular post length, the eight millimeter with the regular post length. Can you share what occurs during the various meetups? Is there sewing occurring? That's a good question. Danny, you probably know more about this than me. Are most of them having sewing involved or? Some go fabric shopping together. Some go to like a restaurant, eat and talk, show their bags. Okay. Some are sewing at some of them as well. Okay. Are they it's sewing at different. a quilt shop? Do you know? I, I don't know. 100%. Okay, Danny says it's a variety of different things. Um, I, I go on the video chats for some of the meetups, but if I'm not home, Danny takes that over. So some of the meetups are at a restaurant, local restaurant. Um, quilt shops like to go shopping. Um, we have seen one at a quilt show. They had a local quilt expo or quilt show and they met there. Um, some are sewing in person, but I think most of them are meeting somewhere and not actually sewing. But um, a hand sewing uh, meetup would be really cool at a restaurant also. Brenda says, I like the light on your machine. Is that the one you mentioned earlier that Danny, uh, that Danny approved stocking? Yes, that, that light um, is the one that I just got in just to try it out. 
We're going to be getting our stock hopefully, hopefully really soon, and I'll let you know as soon as we do on that sewing machine light. Um, Robin says, the Colorado group met, met yesterday and we all worked on bags or minikins. One lady brought cork fabric to show. We did show and tell the last meetup they visited sewing shops. That's really fun uh, to have a meetup and sew. My suggestion, because years ago I tried to organize some local meetups, and this was years ago, probably like, I don't know, maybe five years ago, I called around and emailed uh, local quilt shops and I just asked them if we could have an after hours uh, sewing meetup for a small fee. So they let us use the classroom. Uh, we all paid our entrance fee, which included uh, food. So usually the pizza was ordered or some other type of uh, appetizer or dinner. And then uh, we could bring drinks and usually, you know, some people brought alcohol, but you don't have to. Um, I don't usually like to drink when I sew, but that's just me. Um, afraid of sewing through my finger, I suppose. Um, but that's another option as well, especially if you have a really great uh, relationship with your local quilt shop. It was, I feel like it was mutually beneficial because when we had the sewing meetups at the quilt shops, pretty much everyone that came to the meetup, even though it was later in the evening, everyone bought product, fabric, or rulers or tools. And so there were purchases made. The, the fabric shop um, made a small entrance fee that they used to cover the, the food. And it was just um, great to establish that kind of relationship. So that's another option to, to all of those that are thinking about scheduling meetups. Jane says, when you use Peltex or uh, fusible foam, do you cut smaller or smaller so not in the seam? That's a great question. For the Peltex, I would do the same with that Decoville Heavy that I showed. I do usually cut it smaller to take into consideration the seam allowance. So if the seam allowance is a half inch, I would cut it half inch smaller on all sides to keep that out of the seam allowance. And sometimes the patterns actually do say uh, the fusible foam or the sew-in foam, I usually leave it the same size as my pattern pieces because the foam compresses when you sew through it. Um, although I suppose with the fusible foam, you could also do the same thing and cut it smaller minus the seam allowance and then that would not be in the seam allowance. So that's another option for the fusible foam. Um, as far as the Peltex and the Decoville Heavy, I'd also do the same thing with other um, stiffer interfacings, even the Decorbond. I know that's a thinner one, but I like that to keep that one out of the seam allowance as well. Alicia says, how much cork would you recommend to purchase for the first time use? Can you use one roll for an entire bag and how many accent bags can be made from one roll? That's a good question. We sell the cork fabric in two different sizes, so an 18 by 27 inch size or 18 by 54, which is about a half of a yard. Um, I recently showed a bunch of bags that I used the cork on and I think pretty much every single one used that half yard piece which was the 18 by 54 inch piece. However, if you're using the cork just for accents on a bag or just very small portions, that 18 by 27 inch piece would be okay and you can also piece your cork for the strap off, off that smaller piece as well. Elizabeth says, hi Sarah, I've never tried Oriflame thread, but curious on the difference of that and Guterman thread, I'm looking to try it. So uh, to the average person, I don't think you'd be able to find the difference. Um, I think some sewing machines definitely tend to show a preference for one over the other. Um, if you're looking really close to see uh, the lint level on the threads, uh, I feel like the Oriflame has very small amount of the lint and by lint I mean l the little tiny hairs that you can see off the edges of the threads. Um, I think they're both perfectly fine to use. I, I don't think anybody is looking super close at your finished bag to, uh, to check out uh, lint levels on the thread. <laughs> Charlie says, we have sewn at quilt shops and today we met up at a shop for shopping. Um, shopping's always fun. I love shopping in a group because then you can ask uh, someone else's opinions about different fabric combinations and uh, yeah, Danny said that you had a meetup uh, today. Hope you had a good time. <laughs> All right, Stephanie says, could you please link to that oiling pen again in the comments of YouTube or in the description? That would be great. I have a hard time getting just one drop. Uh, we'll, we'll get, I'll get that posted in the description after the chat. Uh, in the meantime, it's on the website under the Notions tab and it's called uh, Precision Machine Oiler. So uh, kind of toward the end of the list. Nancy says, is there a list where the meetups are located? I'm from upstate New York. Um, actually, if you check the link in the description, I've linked to uh, the Facebook group uh, file where you can find the whole list of all the state and the country groups. So um, it's called Sewing Social. Just check that link in my description on my blog posts and you can find it there. Um, Danny, you are so supportive. What a gem. I, like, I know Danny likes posting those uh, 
Eagle Boosters uh, comments on the show. Debbie says, I wish we could have more than one group for meetups in Texas since our state is so big. So I would highly recommend talking to the admin of your group. Um, it's definitely okay to have different meetups for different areas of your state, but uh, just talk to your admin and you can get that uh, situated and figured out. Uh, we do definitely love to hear people meeting up and obviously states are big and it could be many hours from one end of the state to the other. So we totally understand that. Joanne Fabrics lets you use their sewing room at no charge, but I'm sure they expect you to make purchases. I didn't know that. My Joanne's doesn't have a classroom. It's a, the teeniest, tiniest Joanne's, but that's good information to know that they um, rent out their sewing room. Terry says, no drinking and sewing, but eating and sewing is okay, right? Uh, yeah, I love eating uh, like M&Ms or what, what else do we usually have in here, Danny? I always feel a little worried when I have a drink of some liquid by my machine because my machine's right next to my uh, computer as well. But uh, snacks and fruit snacks. Violet has these fruit snacks that I that I love. They're uh, I think they're Mott's fruit snacks, and I just that's my favorite thing lately to eat in the sewing room. <laughs> Linda says sometimes my sewing makes me want to drink. <laughs> that's really funny, super funny. Jennifer says I have tried to drink and sew every time. Um, every line was ripped out the next day. Uh, lightweight. <laughs> Danny's always trying to get me to take a shot of whiskey or something when he's on the computer and I'm sewing, but I'm like, no, no, I gotta concentrate, Danny. <laughs> Season says, what pattern would require a 40 inch zipper? So there's a few of my patterns that require a 40 inch zipper. Um, the biggest train case from Crimson and Clover, that's uh, a 40 inch zipper trimmed down. I think it's trimmed down to 36 inches perhaps. Uh, the Amethyst Project Bags needs a 40 inch zipper. Um, this uh, Minikin Season 2 that I showed a couple weeks ago, or maybe it was last week, the cosmetic bag, that's a 40 inch zipper. Uh, yeah, so there's a bunch of projects that I use with a 40 inch zipper. Uh, Michelle says, release the Minikins early, please. Uh, I hate to disappoint you, but we haven't filmed any of the videos yet, so <laughs> I know that's 100%, like 200% not gonna happen. Danny's laughing over there. <laughs> Sorry, I wish it could be early, but I thought it would be a nice treat for Halloween to release it on October 31st. Anne says, what are the benefits of using Orifil cotton versus polyester for bags? So um, years ago, the difference um, was illustrated to me verbally, the difference between cotton and polyester. So, and I can see this because I've tried to do this in the past. So polyester thread uh, will never you'll never be able to rip it. So I've tried with my bare hands just because I was curious to find the difference. Pulling on it with my bare hands, there's no way I could ever uh, rip that thread in half. Cotton on the other hand will. Um, I'm not saying the thread that I use for my bags uh, tears or tears easily. Um, I usually use 40 weight thread, but 80 weight thread, which is used for uh, hand sewing, like English paper piecing, the Orifil 80 weight thread, yes, I could take it in my bare hands and rip the thread in half. Um, the difference that was illustrated to me many years ago, uh, as far as quilting, uh, a quilt made with a uh, uh, piece or whatever with cotton thread versus polyester thread, the polyester thread is never going to rip. So if over the years that particular quilt, I know we're talking about bag making, but this illustration just jumped into my mind, uh, a quilt pieced with polyester thread, if over the years it comes under um, strain or friction due to just aging or being used, you might actually be ripping the fabric because the polyester thread will not tear. However, the cotton thread, if something should happen to the quilt where um, it comes under stress from being used or being washed, um, that cotton thread will, if under heavy duress, will snap in half. And so I think in that particular instance, I think I'd rather have my thread snapping and having some you know, stitches having to be redone than the polyester thread tearing through the fabric. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. I think that was just my illustration of the difference between the two. Neither is bad. I would be totally fine with making a bag out of either cotton or polyester thread. I just felt for some reason I had to share that story. All right, Danny is cutting me off from questions. So let's get over to tonight's giveaway. So we're giving away another Minikin Season 2 bundle. The Minikin Season 2 is not coming out till October 31st. But uh, we're giving away, I think, first six Sundays total, we're giving away this bundle because we're really excited about the new Minikin Season 2. Um, so the question for that giveaway, all you have to do is answer this question in the comments to be entered for the giveaway. I'll be uh, choosing one randomly drawn winner and announcing the winner next Sunday on uh, Social Sunday. 
All you have to do is let me know the answer to this question in the comments. What is your favorite movie? So go ahead and just let me know in the comments. Curious to see what movies people are watching and are their favorites. So thank you so much for joining me for Social Sunday. I hope you have a great week this week and happy sewing. I'll see you again next Sunday. Bye everybody.